so uh, good evening everyone uh, all these students uh, so uh, in our series of webinar today we have brought a very uh, fresh topic and uh, when we think of ms in us or any other program in uh, international uh, country or foreign education then the first thing which comes in our mind is loan how do we process it it would be a very very intriguing process and a lot of documents will be uh, required uh, security will be required guarantor will be required but what if somebody says that there is no requirement of guarantor no requirement of security very low rate of interest and very simple procedure so today we have brought uh, leap finance we have got leap finance with us and we have mr vishal singh uh, the ceo of uh, leap finance who himself is an alum of iit kharagpur he founded the company uh, along with his friend arna and he is going to tell you some interesting things uh, about how uh, his company offers you loan um, um so uh, and from the globalizers team we have prashant sir here who is a international education consultant since the last 14 years and has a lot of expertise in this field um i am mrs umit saran and i look into the university relations department and the uh, mentoring of ug applicants we have rahul malviya here uh, who is our digital marketing strategist and uh, so uh, i will before moving over to and handing over to uh, mr vishal vaibhav to start with the presentation um i would just like to tell you that after mr weber's presentation we'll be having question answer session to keep to keep your questions ready and you can type them in your chat box and uh, prashant sir will also be asking a few questions to weber uh, mr weber saying so over to you mr weber please start great, great. thanks uh, umi uh, welcome everybody just give me a a uh, second i'll share my screen right umi do you want to uh, stop sharing please yes yes i'm stop yeah thank you hi is my screen visible yes yes great, great. Uh, again uh, hi everybody good evening good to uh, have you all uh, on this uh, webinar as we was mentioning i do have a few slides uh, with me uh, i'll promise to not take uh, more than 15 20 minutes uh, just quickly taking you through uh, a little bit about leap a little bit uh, about uh, why um, i started leap uh, a little bit about our product why we believe we've created uh, uh, you know a product which is sort of most friendly for students like yourself looking to go abroad to uh, to pursue higher education uh, talk a few nuances about our our process and uh, yeah as i said i'll try and wrap it up in the next 15 20 minutes and uh, then would love to uh, answer questions from uh, from your side i know uh, in these times there are many many things about so ask me anything about the macro about leap uh, product process and uh, you know Uh, i'll try and answer them to the best of my ability so uh, just uh, you know umi did mention it uh, i'll take 30 seconds also just talk about leap uh, uh, i i am webhav singh uh, i founded this company about 10 months ago uh, along with uh, arnav uh, arnav and i go back almost 15 years we both graduated from uh, iit kharagpur uh, we are we are an international lender Uh, which uh, essentially we've got offices both in the US as well as in India in India we are in Bangalore and uh, the idea behind setting us up like that was uh, effectively we wanted to offer indian students like yourselves uh, access uh, to dollar funding so essentially to be able to borrow in us dollars and i'll come to why uh, that is so helpful to all of you and therefore we are set up uh, across these two major geographies and it helps you, us in being able to offer you a far superior product it also helps us in sort of really staying connected with you right through your journey uh, from when you are in india and seeking to go abroad to when you are in the us obviously studying 
uh, and then subsequently uh, as you graduate from school and uh, work in the US and, and repay the loan. So uh, we are now a 27 member team. Uh, uh, bulk of that team is in Bangalore, as I mentioned. We're super uh, excited that we got uh, uh, late last year, we were funded by Sequoia Capital. Uh, who are obviously, uh, you know, one of the world's uh, most established venture capital for firms. So uh, we, we are very happy to sort of have them, uh, their backing uh, in our journey. So now uh, just sort of, uh, you know, what really got me started uh, in building Leap. So I have been uh, financing high potential students like yourselves uh, for almost three or four years. And... Uh, uh, you know, I financed close to 3,000 students, primarily most of them going to the U.S. And uh, as I was building that business out in my last role, I realized that while obviously, you know, we were doing, a, I would like to believe a good job in, in being able to finance, uh, uh, you know, peers of yourself in, in going abroad, uh, there were, as I built that business out, I realized there was a few gaps uh, in, in what was being offered and what we could potentially really change. And really that is where the idea of Leap came about. Uh, the fundamental gap, which sort of, you know, quite candidly started giving me sleepless nights and I felt, hey, here's an opportunity to truly build a product uh, which takes care of the student's interests, uh, was the difference in interest rates. Uh, so essentially, obviously, uh, you know, India is still very much uh, a developing economy. Interest rates here are much, much higher than what they exi uh, exist in developed economies, uh, particularly the US. And therefore, uh, you know, I realized that Indian students going to the top schools in the US, going to uh, and pursuing the most uh, sort of in-demand degrees, you know, computer science, data science, engineering programs, uh, were in most cases paying interest rates, which is almost twice as high, sometimes even more uh, than what their American peers were paying. And this was because of uh, just where uh, interest rates are in these two countries. And that really, I believed, uh, was something which uh, required changing. And really, that's where, uh, you know, the idea for Leap uh, came about to essentially build a global platform where we could acquire uh, and you know sort of uh, uh, you know cater to students coming from uh, emerging countries like india and as they move abroad and we are currently focused only on the us but as they move to the us uh, to act, uh, be able to finance them in us dollars and therefore be able to offer them much much cheaper loans than what they could get in india and really that's that's the product we have uh, created for you. Uh, we have uh, what we like to believe some of the lowest uh, rates in the market. Uh, that is the advantage of being able to uh, lend to students in US dollars. Uh, a point there is our rates are fixed. Uh, that is our rates remain constant uh, through the life of the loan. So if you take a, from us a 9% loan today, irrespective of how interest rates move globally, you continue, your loan continues to be at 9%. So it completely removes uh, uncertainty from your future obligations. So now you have uh, a US dollar loan and your expenses are all in US dollars. So you've completely removed uncertainty around FX. At the same time, you have a loan where the interest rate is fixed and therefore you can with certainty uh, be able to know as well as plan for future repayments. The second uh, point where we believe, uh, uh, you know, we, we really offer a product which can, uh, which really meets the needs of students is the fact that uh, uh, we back your future potential rather than, uh, you know, the assets you or your family have. So what I mean by that is all our loans are unsecured i.e. they do not require any form of collateral in form of house, FDs, any other savings. Uh, we truly believe that, uh, you know, once you graduate from uh, some of these top schools, you will do fantastically well in your lives. And we are here to back that future potential and back what you are going to become in the years to come rather than 
uh, the sort of uh, families you come from or the sort of wealth you come from. So uh, everything we do is backing your future potential. Uh, we offer our loans come with no with an upfront processing fee, and outside that there are no other hidden charges or costs involved. Uh, you know there there are many uh, sort of uh, below the line cost items which uh, often come into loans. Uh, none of that uh, is is relevant uh, in any of our loan products. Uh, you can at the time of sanction we will tell you your. interest rate which remains fixed through the life of the loan we will tell you your processing fee and that's the total cost you will incur over the life of the loan another big point which i found uh, uh, you know sort of uh, in my past experience which was slight which required improvement was uh, just how much financing was being offered often uh, students were sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place by hey they did get a loan but the loan didn't cover their entire uh, cost of attendance and therefore we've in in our uh, sort of product we offer full coverage of your tuition plus your living expenses we want to uh, you know sort of we want to back you all the way uh, it really makes no sense if we were to give you a certain fraction of what you need to study so we uh, are willing to sort of uh, fund you for your entire cost of attendance it's completely at your discretion this is another sort of finer point i want to bring out it's completely at your discretion as to how much of that uh, uh, you want to borrow from us so it's completely flexible in terms of how much uh, uh, you know you want to take from us but we are willing to go the whole distance and finally uh, you know uh, it's a uh, i'll come i'll spend a, a couple of minutes uh, on our process but at the end of that process which really takes no more than 20 to 30 minutes followed by an uh, uh, sort of uh, an evaluation process offline you get uh, if once you are approved you get a free sanction letter from us uh, so net net it's like a simple 20 30 minute online process a 2 to 3 day evaluation and within 72 hours you've now gotten a sanction letter which you can take back to your college get your i20 issued take it for a visa and all of that so uh, that is again something we don't ask you to pay up front for the sanction we know there are still subsequent steps to be followed and completed before you actually uh, uh, are able to go abroad and till that point uh, your engagement with us uh, is free so uh, this we were uh, sorry to interrupt you there's yes sumi continuous sound coming uh, like that of typing uh from my side uh sir i think your earphone sound it's your earphone sound yeah yeah sorry is it still coming uh no once you speak uh, i will be able to tell you okay uh umi i'll keep going in case uh, it's it's still coming tell me and i'll yeah. try and see cool uh, so uh, now spending a, a minute on the process uh, you know uh, i talked about uh, uh, the product features which we believe are very very friendly for students like yourself at the same time we've combined that with a completely sort of do it yourself online journey uh, our end to end process uh, is is can be done sitting in front of your computer you don't need to step out you don't need to uh, give us uh, you know uh, lumps of physical documents uh, it's a very easy process you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, which primarily covers your past academic backgrounds your international exam scores the university and the course you're going for uh, and a few other details you know some of you will have uh, past employment so uh, tell us a few details about yourself uh usually it's now taking our students uh, uh, less than 10 minutes to do that at the end of that 10 minute uh, sort of form you get an immediate offer from us the offer uh, categorically defines the amount of loan uh, we are willing to fund and at what interest rate so literally in 10 minutes you figured out uh, uh, the terms of the loan you will get from leap uh you then upload documents uh, you know it's again a seamless interface uh, we ask you to basically upload documents uh, uh validating some of the information you've entered earlier in the form uh 
uh, we then do uh, an a, a sort of a, an internal evaluation of your application usually that takes us uh, no more than a day or two but our commitment is to uh, come back to you with a final decision in uh, less than 3 working days this at the end of that the sanction is available for you uh, uh, to download and uh, you know take it to your university and get your i20 and and complete uh, the rest of the process so that's the process of taking a loan once you've gone and obviously gotten your i20 gotten a visa and are close to now leaving for the us uh, uh, unlike uh, many of our, uh, the indian lenders we directly disburse Uh, to the university on your behalf, uh, we recognize that uh, you know at the you know in the days leading up to you leaving for the U.S., there's so many things you need to put in place. Uh, leave the disbursement headache to us. We will fund uh, the university on your behalf directly. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, with our advantage of being present both in India as well as the U.S., uh, we we are sort of there for you uh, right through that entire journey. quick point very uh, simple uh, anyone who is an indian citizen and uh, above the age of 18 uh, can apply for leap currently we are only financing uh, masters programs in stem in the us uh, that's our focus uh, uh, for fall 2020 uh, we currently uh, uh, f- uh, provide funding for uh, 2200 plus courses at 200 plus schools uh, we are continuously adding uh, to this list as well so uh, you know while this is pretty large coverage uh, but uh, you know we'll keep expanding on that as well so if you are planning to go uh, for an ms uh, in the us and uh, from india uh, well uh, you are very very uh, you know, i would encourage you to come and apply f- with us yeah so i'll spend i've mostly spoken about this i'll spend 10 just reiterate this because we are very very uh, you know particularly in these times uh, when obviously all of us uh, are sort of uh, locked in in our houses we are still open for business we are completely online all you really need to do is uh, you know as i said spend 10 minutes on our online application form you'll get an offer from us upload your documents uh, once we have all your documents within 3 days we'll come back to you uh with your the final conditions of your loan you can download your sanction letter and uh, continue the process of getting your i20 and visa once you are ready uh to move to the us that is when uh, we will collect uh, uh, a processing fee from you and then directly uh, disburse to the university on your behalf and you can call the funds as and when uh you know as and when dues are to be paid to the university a uh, quick comparison uh, obviously there are uh, a few uh, players out there uh, you know offering uh, uh, you know financing to students like yourself who want to pursue higher education abroad uh, i've spoken about all of these fact uh, pointers but uh, a quick run through obviously interest rate uh, we offer dollar financing we offer some of the lowest rates uh, you can avail in the market and these rates are remain fixed through the term of your loan uh, all our loans are collateral free we back your future potential and uh, therefore you don't need to pledge any assets uh, for securing a loan from uh, leap uh, our process is completely online versus the weeks and right now versus for most traditional lenders uh, are almost unable to process uh, applications given their offline processes we are completely open for business all you need to do is give us 10 minutes of your time get an offer upload the documents in 3 days you'll have a sanction and uh, uh, you know you can continue with your journey uh, find you know couple of other points there uh, around all the costs being uh, obviously up front and uh, you know once we've sort of stated that they remain fixed through the life of your loan and finally we finance uh, the full cost of uh, attendance for you for your entire course duration up front so if you're going for a two program we will approve the total cost of attendance across those two years uh, today itself which removes any uncertainty uh, which you can uh, potentially 
uh, get into if uh, you know we, if we were to finance you for a semester or two uh, so on and so forth we've uh, we've now been uh, in uh, business uh, for as i said for about 10 plus months uh, very excited about uh, the students we've backed uh, we've currently now financed uh, close to almost 250 students uh, you know we want to finance uh, many more hundreds uh, this season and beyond so you know this is uh, students like yourselves uh, like badal are the students are the people why we are in business Yes, so really that was my uh, sort of quick run through. I, I hope I've been able to give you a, a broad high level overview, uh, but now very happy to address specific questions you may have uh, across any of the points uh, uh, which I raised or just general about the macro as well. Uh, thank you so much, Vapo. Uh, it was really very, very interesting. And uh, I think uh, for, for our students, there are uh, many on the webinar today. And uh, it must be something uh, they, are, they would be looking forward to, uh, which would save their time, their money, and so many things. So uh, let's see what questions we have from these students. Sure. Um, there is one question Ridvik is as asking, what if my college or course is not in the list? Right. Uh, so, mentioned Ritik, we are currently covering 200 plus schools, which is uh, sort of, you know, uh, a, a pretty substantial portion of the colleges uh, Indian students typically go to. Uh, so, I, I hope your school's already there. If it's not there, I can tell you we are continuously adding to this list as well. We are adding literally uh, schools and courses on a weekly basis. So I'd encourage you to keep uh, sort of, you know, check coming back to our website and checking uh, if your course is financed. So I think we've got good coverage. Uh, yes, there are schools out there uh, which we uh, are currently not supporting, but we are continuously adding that. So we'll, uh, you know, if, if you drop us an email uh, with the, your particular school and course, if it's not currently on our approved list, uh, then we'll get back to you once uh, we go live in that school for sure as well. Uh, there's another question from Yashasvi. After how much time we have to start repaying the loan? Right. She's sure. asking about the module. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, the full repayments on the loan, the full monthly payments on the loan, uh, start uh, about six months after graduation. Uh, so after you graduate from college, the exact time when the uh, loan, the full loan repayment start uh, is actually a function of the duration of your course. So, you know, if, if you're going for a 12 month course, your full uh, EMI repayments on the loan start after 24 months. If you're going for a longer duration course, they typically start after six months. So it's, it's a little bit of a function of the duration of your course. Uh, but, you know, when we sanction it to you, we'll clearly specify uh, when your full repayment start. For most students, given most master's programs are 24 months, repayments start uh, after 30 months. Uh, a point I would like to highlight here is uh, that we also require small monthly payments while you are in school. And for the first uh, six odd months after you get out of school as well, before the full repayments uh, kick in, uh, these payments are uh, small amounts which you choose at the time of application. They vary anywhere from $50 a month to $200 a month. It's completely dependent upon how much uh, you want to pay uh, while you're studying. And there are two primary reasons why we, we ask you to make these small payments. Uh, the first reason is it reduces the overall cost of borrowing because while you are studying, you are obviously accruing interest. If you make no payments, then all that interest gets added to your loan and uh, effectively you end up paying interest on interest. If you make these small payments and particularly if you're making like a hundred, hundred and twenty five dollar odd payment, then you can actually ensure that you're covering all the interest as it, it is being accrued and therefore uh, the overall cost of your loan reduces. 
but uh, the exact quantum of uh, how much you should be paid is completely determined by you with a minimum of fifty dollars. That's one reason why we charge that. The second reason is also a very important reason: uh, is these small payments allow you to build your credit history in the U.S. from day one when you land in the U.S. So essentially, uh, you know, before you graduate. you would have made 24 payments if you are going for a 24 month program and therefore by the time you get out of school you already have credit history in us and uh, i i am sure you know uh, our audience completely uh, relates with the importance of credit histories in in today's world this is even more important in the us context where not only do financial institutions uh, check your uh, bureau scores before uh, giving you a financial product but even when you get out of college and you are renting your first apartment in the us your landlord checks your fico score uh, essentially your credit score and if you've got no credit score like most international students end up having then uh, you know you effectively end up paying higher deposits you could pay higher rent so building a credit history is very very important in a new country and these small payments allow you to build that credit history while you are still studying so that when you come to the mainstream economy you are sort of you have access to all financial services products uh, in the us from day one as a super prime customer yes uh, so another question is could you elaborate a little on the upfront cost yes so the upfront cost uh, it's a processing fee uh, it will be a, a percentage usually about 2% on the loan sanction amount which you pay after you've gotten your visa and uh, you know you've signed the loan agreement with us before you actually request uh, for the fund so effectively ask us to make a disbursement on your behalf to the college that is the point when you pay a processing fee it's a it's a percentage of the uh, loan you take from us as i said typical percentage being about 2% right um after how much time we have to start repaying the loan that is the same question again i think uh, you have already answered it uh, that is after 6 months or after the duration of the course it depends on the course duration right correct that's when the full uh, payment start uh, umi but as i described we also take a small monthly uh, payment while the student is in college which the student chooses yes. so i have a i have a question in in this particular uh, you know uh, the loan payment starting right so um, some students uh, are able to enhance their course of studies right let's say they want they they were supposed to graduate in may and they they keep one more course and they graduate in the next semester what happens in that case yes so uh, prashant what would happen is uh, you know obviously uh, i i wouldn't say this is an exception but this is a, a little bit of a uh, you know maybe 10% students 15% students do that then the minimum payments continue while they are in school they then okay. get a 6 month uh, sort of you know moratorium yeah where they continue to pay the small payments and then the full emi is kicked in got it lovely yes movie carry on what happens if a student is unable to get a job after 6 months of graduation <laughs> yeah so a firstly uh, you know i i i i know these are uh, challenging times for the world and uh, you know uh, Uh, these are questions which come to uh, students minds these are questions which come to every uh, working professionals mind i would say but uh, i i i i think uh, you know the decision to uh, go abroad and study i know that's a uh, that's a long journey uh, may most students who are planning to go abroad in the coming months probably started thinking about this a year year and a half ago right they've gone through if i could say many many uh, hurdles to get here uh, you know taken the international exams applied to universities gotten admits they'll have to take a loan uh, and all of that and uh, then when you 
actually sort of if you think about it uh, you know uh, we tend to overreact uh, to uh, sort of you know uh, bad news coming away and obviously there's a, a whole amount of bad news coming away right now but if you think about it uh, you know you should take a step back and that's how i like to uh, look at this obviously i am you know by financing students uh, uh, like uh, the ones on the uh, call today uh, you know we are backing uh, your future potential as well and the way i like to look at it is you know uh, i don't know if uh, the audience fully relates with cricket but i think uh, I, i think they do and as we say you know form is temporary class is permanent if you think about that we are backing your future potential your future potential is not going to change uh, uh, in the next 2 3 6 months uh, of uh, you know the virus being around so the way i like to look at it is hey this is probably one of the better times to go and study your real full payments only kick in 3 years from now give or take you know you'll all take 2 to 2 and a half year courses uh, then there'll be a small moratorium you really if you go this fall your loan repayments in full start only sometime in 2023 and really even the most bearish predictions on on the world like you know oh how long are, is it going to take for the world to recover it will will sort of you know do project that we will get out of this crisis in if not the next few months then the next few quarters definitely in the next couple of years so you almost want to sort of you know ride the next bull market if i may say the next growth of phase because while the economy is going through its struggles you'll actually be in school and studying and once you graduate uh, with these uh, sort of you know advanced degrees uh, you'll actually uh, i would like to strongly believe and i'm in some ways i'm putting my money where my mouth is by actually uh, uh, financing you guys is uh, that once you graduate from school we'll definitely be past uh, these challenging times and uh, there is no reason for you to worry about uh, you know how things pan out after that and also Rabo, i think you might want to uh, put a light on uh, specifically how the markets in america works and how the country you know values talent and that's why how you are assured of getting the repayments as well yeah no prashant absolutely i'll spend another minute uh, on that uh, so you know there's whole heap of data uh, which uh, one can consume uh, but i'll i'll without uh, boring everyone with details i'll i'll pick a couple of stats which uh, sort of give us the confidence that uh, you know our students will will definitely see it in life is uh, you know uh, i have mentioned in my presentation as well we are currently focused only on students uh, going for ms in stem now uh, you know uh, there are so many studies which uh, essentially prove that uh, there is a massive shortage of stem talent in the us uh, as a matter of fact in 2018 uh, forbes uh, did a uh, did a whole piece on how the us economy is effectively in a stem crisis uh, these were the words they used and the only way the us is solving for this crisis is effectively by importing uh, high quality students uh, Uh, from countries like, like india and uh, you know therefore the us itself is in in a massive need for students who have these specialist skills in science technology engineering and maths like there is a there are studies out there which uh, clearly show that in spite of uh, us universities increasing focus on stem degrees 5 years from now in 2025 America will still face a shortage of about two and a half million in terms of people who are qualified for STEM roles, and therefore, you know, that's the reality of you know this uh, short-term uh, macro challenges which we are facing are are obviously real and and uh, you know uh, they they do uh, sort of play on people's minds, but we should not forget the big picture thing that hey. stem is something which is really defining in so many ways uh, uh, human races progress you are going to an economy which has a massive gap in the supply of talented stem professionals and you will be one of them wonderfully put yes so maybe we can move on yes um what if the loan is sanctioned and course is to be deferred by 6 months or uh, considering the current scenario will the terms be changed 
Yeah, so uh, two things uh, I'll write there, Omi. Uh, one, I, I sort of highlighted as well, it's uh, a change we made where we said, hey, we are not going to charge you for the sanction. We are only going to charge you just before you are about to sort of actually leave for the US because we appreciated these are uncertain times and uh, you know students uh, should not be bearing any economic cost for trying to sort of you know remain positive and trying to continue with their process in these times. So uh, there is no sort of you know we since we don't collect a fee there is nothing which the student loses by taking a sanction and then subsequently deferring his or her course. Now to come to the part about what happens uh, to the actual terms of the sanction. Well, that's, uh, uh, you know, largely the terms will remain the same. And the reason why I use the word largely uh, rather than, you know, without exception is because students themselves may make some changes. For example, you may be wanting to go to university A today. If you decide to go change your university, obviously, uh, some terms may potentially change. Definitely the loan amount will change because the, as I said, we finance the cost of attendance and that can vary. Uh, maybe uh, some things change in your personal circumstance, which, uh, which may also tweak uh, some of the terms of the loan, but largely, and when I, uh, you know, I, I probably want to give you the comfort with a number, 95% plus students will still continue to see the same terms. Uh, on a sanction which we give them now and subsequently if they have to defer and go six months from now they will largely see the same terms that's good uh, another question is what's the repayment tenure yes so the repayment tenure is again something which uh, the student can choose it varies uh, at the time of application so when we give you the offer you have the option to choose the repayment tenure it varies between seven to ten years and the student can choose depending upon his or her convenience. Okay. Uh, one question is, what is the process when in current scenario, if any, okay, that is the same question. Um, gets deferral or, you know, uh, same question. So you yes. have already answered it. Yeah. Correct. So take a sanction from us. If you then subsequently want to defer, uh, you know, when you do make up your mind, say in November, December, uh, just let us know we'll do in less than 24 hours, we'll give you a fresh sanction. Uh, and largely the terms of that sanction will remain the same, uh, subject to, you know, uh, you know, you're not significantly changing your college course or, or some other key parameter. Okay. Um, we don't have any other questions. Uh, do you have some? Yeah. yeah. I want to have uh, some questions and discussions uh, with them. Uh, so, uh, Wonderfully put. Thank you for a you know lovely input, Babu. My first question, uh, you know, uh, relates to a few cases that I've seen earlier. So uh, let's say if a student is going to CMU kind of a university or any university, which is for the matter very very costly. Yeah. So in in those circumstances, of course, you will pay semester by semester, and you would sanction, uh, for example, a loan of eighty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Um, now, a student relies completely on leave finance. He knows that leave is going to help me you know, get through my journey. Uh, sometimes in earlier cases with some vendors, right, uh, it was difficult for them, maybe because of the funding issues or whatever, they could not pay or it was very hard for them to arrange the second semester fee because at the end of the day, it's a startup, it's a 10-month-old company. So I want you to give our uh, students a certain level of assurance that once we have sanctioned a loan, we have sanctioned a loan. No, sure, uh, Prashant. That's a uh, that's a very good question uh, uh, to be asked of a young company. Uh, I think uh, uh, there are two, three points I'll want to give uh, students comfort on. Uh, the first one, obviously, uh, it's a young company, uh, but it's not a new business for me. Financial services in general is not a new business for me. I have been in this space now for uh, 12 plus years, my entire oh. professional life. And therefore, I am very, very cognizant of, uh, you know, the commitments we are making and how to go about honoring them. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to uh, sort of putting our financial planning in place, uh, I can assure students that we've done that very, very well. Uh, we've already, in addition to the equity we've raised, uh, which is sort of the second point I want to highlight. The equity we've raised uh, 
is from probably the world's most uh, renowned venture capital company, Sequoia. Uh, they backed us uh, literally on day zero. We continue to enjoy uh, a very strong backing uh, from them. And that makes us very, very confident from a equity financing of the business itself that we are in excellent shape. Uh, we've also already, as a, in spite of being a young company, we've been able to put together uh, you know, debt lines uh, in the US, uh, you know, how, how all lending companies work for, for the uh, benefit of the larger audience is of, uh, is of course, we take loans from larger institutions as well. And that's how we lend to you. And we've got those arrangements in place as well. So therefore, uh, I think we've got uh, all our plans in place to make sure that whatever we are committing to students, uh, we will honor. And uh, there is one, uh, uh, one point I will add here as well, and uh, it'll be a little cheek and tongue, but uh, uh, you know, Prashant, since you asked the question, I won't resist, uh, is the fact that uh, I think uh, all of us, uh, particularly I know Prashant Urmi, you would have uh, associated with this. Uh, for the last couple of years, some very large financial institutions have also uh, face challenges in keeping their promises to students. And uh, some of those institutions have been around for 10 plus years. And so, you know, it's, I think it's about uh, financial planning and uh, making sure that you do your maths right. I think age is, is truly a number uh, as long as uh, you make sure students in, at the top of our minds I'm very, very confident that we will honor all our commitments. So uh, the fact that we are 10 months old, there were companies which were 10 years old and didn't uh, honor their commitment. So I won't read much into that. Wonderful. That was needed from you. <laughs> so, uh, A few more questions, uh, Vabha. Sure. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, Ridwik is asking, can anyone co-sign up my loan? Yes. Uh, so uh, all our loans... Uh, 90% of our students uh, add either of parents as a co-signer. Uh, it is, you know, in only a handful of cases, uh, you know, uh, students add uh, some other blood relative as a co-signer. The point I would like to make on the co-signer is we are not evaluating the co-signer in terms of his or her ability to service the loan. If we were to do that, most people would not get approved for a loan. It is very expensive to go and study in the US and it's very hard for uh, Indian families to essentially be able to, uh, you know, sort of bear the full economic cost of borrowing for that loan. So we are, our loans are fully approved basis, your future outcomes. The reason why we ask for a co-signer, uh, as I said, is not to really evaluate uh, his or her ability to pay the loan on your behalf, but rather to continue to establish a contact with you. Like my past experience tells me, you know, of course, uh, uh, you know, once you've gone abroad, you've got so many things on your plate, you you want to really excel in your grades, uh, get the best internships, get the best jobs. And just sometimes students, because for many of them, this is the first time they are taking a loan, they often just forget about things. And that is where, uh, you know, some gray hair in the family uh, is, is good. And that is where our ability to contact somebody in your family helps us in making sure uh, that you know you sort of remain on track for your repayments. So the co-signer is primarily for contactability. The your loan is sanctioned primarily based on your past credentials and your future potential. Okay. Uh, another question, is there a helpline through which we can get in touch if we have any questions in and during the process? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've got a number on our website. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, you know, customer service uh, support, uh, uh, you know, Monday to Saturday. So absolutely, uh, you know, feel free to give us a ring anytime. And, uh, you know, if you are in the application process as well and you face some challenges, we'll proactively reach out to you as well. Okay. And uh, there is 
And the question is the semester wise payment according to some schedule of the college or after every semester student needs to get in touch with the company in any way? No, so it's it's actually a very simple uh, process, guys. Every semester, this the your the school you go to will issue to you effectively uh, a fee due notice, which clearly lays out uh, how much you need to pay to the university. All you need to do is upload that uh, notice on our portal, and we will transfer the funds accordingly directly to the university. So the only sort of there's there's no real back and forth here involved the university sends you hey you need to give us $20,000 uh within the next 4 weeks you just come and upload uh, that on our portal we will go and make the credit on your behalf to the university we will send a confirmation back to you and yes uh, it's as simple as that okay and the living expenses must be go going to the account of the student right the living expenses uh, go to so there are two ways uh, uh, omay that happens the living expenses can go to a us account of the student so particularly in the second third fourth semesters once uh, universities uh, once students have sort of settled in in the us they will all have bank accounts we are happy to put that money uh, in their us bank account uh, in the first semester uh, or uh, for the time period when the student does not have a us bank account we will fund the living expenses to the university as well okay portion to uh, either a student's account or give them a check uh, very few nowadays prefer giving cash but most to our universities transfer the living expenses to the student in the matter of 2 to 3 days great okay and uh, there's another question can i make a loan application even though i haven't confirmed or secured my admission absolutely absolutely we uh, you know our process allows you to make uh, multiple applications uh, because we understand that students uh, often apply to two three four universities uh, our the approval process does not require you to have an admit we compulsorily require the admit only at the time of disbursing the loan which is effectively when you are ready to uh, go abroad and by then you would definitely have an admit in place okay uh, another question is is no collateral concept applicable for high loans as well or is there any limit no so uh, that's a very good question i know uh, there are many lenders which uh, do this pitch that for very small ticket loans they are happy to do it collateral free but as soon as you ask for uh, larger sums anything over 50 60000 dollars uh, collateral comes in all our loans irrespective of ticket size are without collateral great uh, is there a cap on living expenses and how is that evaluated yeah so uh, we've got a model running uh, uh, you know across all us cities which uh, in which there are schools which we finance uh, we have a pretty strong uh, uh, estimate of what it takes a student uh, uh, to sort of you know uh, meet daily life expenses in those cities so uh, it's uh, determined by that uh, it's i will also uh, just give students here the comfort that uh, if for whatever reason someone believes that he or she uh, uh, needs a little more for living expenses and has uh, uh, you know sort of a good reason for that uh, we are very happy to extend that as well having said that uh, you know as i said we finance 250 odd students we processed now 400 plus applications i don't i can't remember any single student uh, coming back to us saying hey uh, i think my living expenses will not be covered by what you sanction okay uh right now there are no more questions so uh, prashant uh, do you have any questions for uh, vaibhav yeah i think couple of more questions so let's say if a student uh, uh goes to a university and uh, in under some circumstances if he wants to transfer to another university Uh, so what happens to our loan the loan is also transferable from one university to another another university or or you would be again evaluating the case 
No, uh, definitely uh, the loan will be transferable, Prashant, from uh, University A to B, provided we also sort of, you know, obviously uh, have University B on our approval list. Okay. Okay, great. And living expenses, how, what is the earliest that student can start getting? Yes, so uh, uh, actually, Prashant, uh, as I said, uh, some students we've already uh, financed, uh, you know, who uh, have a U.S. bank account. There are now a, uh, a couple of uh, fintechs in the U.S. which are sort of effectively op able to open uh, bank accounts uh, for students while they're still in India. So if that's the case, then we can put the money in that bank account, you know, at the student's discretion, even, uh, you know, a few days before he or she enters the U.S. Uh, if it goes to the university, as I said, it typically takes the university two to three days. So, uh, so what we tell our students is uh, definitely uh, sort of, you know, uh, budget for, uh, uh, you know, some contingency and therefore make sure that uh, you effectively are able to meet your first couple of weeks expenses. And definitely within that time window, uh, the living expenses will be transferred to you through your university. Uh, we have one question from me that uh, the list of universities uh, uh, with you are there on the website, I suppose, right? For the students to check? Yes. Okay. So they can check whether their institution is there on your list or not. Absolutely. Right. And is, is Ca Ca California, we have got the license? Abba? No, Prashant, not yet. Okay. That, that's Texas? a tricky one. And, <laughs> I know that's I know. a uh, that's a very important state as well. Uh, I think once we have uh, California, our sort of coverage. I, I've done a, a deep mapping of universities and schools and states uh, students go to. Once we have California, we'll have about 85, 88 percent coverage. Absolutely, completely understood. Well, I think yeah. I mean, um, it was wonderful to hear from you, and looking forward that uh, the country gets benefit uh, from your you know, uh, from, from Leap Finance and a lot of dreams come true through your support. No, uh, we're super excited uh, uh, about this, Prashant, as well. Uh, I think uh, it is heartening to be able to, in some small way, uh, be able to contribute to success of uh, Bright Young Minds. Absolutely. No, I mean, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, and yes, Umi, I mean, you can conclude. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the attendees, all the students who took part in the webinar today. And I'm sure that you must be having a lot to take from this webinar. Uh, we have uh, we had a very good uh, opportunity to interact with uh, Weber, uh, who is the CEO of uh, Leap Finance, and he gave you a lot of inspiring, optimistic, and uh, a very new option. Uh, which is hassle-free also for your loans. And uh, please feel free if you uh, have still any questions, any doubts, you can contact us at Globalizers. You can contact Leap Finance as well. You can go to their site and their helpline number and you can contact them for any other doubts. So thank yes, you and once again. Yeah. And we work very closely with Leap Finance and the idea is to support the students. So we're working very closely with them. Uh, Globalizers works very, very closely with Leap Finance and we have understood and we have, we have learned that uh, uh, their processing is absolutely effective. The students can go and now can start, uh, you know, uh, working out their loans and, you know, keep exploring the opportunities with Leap Finance. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Weber, for taking out time and interacting with our students. And uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you in our next webinar. Good, good night and have a safe, uh, uh, keep yourself safe and keep yourself well. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.